The activity that I'm going to present is one that I do near the very beginning of the school year. And it involves the concept of density, but it also serves as a way to reinforce graphing skills. And in the state of Missouri, and I'm sure in states throughout the United States, being able to construct graphs and interpret graphs is very important for state testing. It's important for college board testing, like the ACT, for example. So in this manner, we practice the graphing and prepare them for state tests. But it also reinforces this concept of density. Now, I like to use household products. So the product that I'm going to use for this experiment is SaltSense. And SaltSense claims that it has 33% less sodium than regular salt. But when we look at the front part of the label with this claim, and then we rotate to look at the ingredients on the label, it is definitely sodium chloride that is in the salt sense. And so we always learn that Sodium chloride is NaCl, so how can salt sense have 33% less sodium if it's NaCl? And in fact, the ingredients in here are comparable to the ingredients in regular salt. So here's the charge that my students have to do. They're going to do an experiment where they are going to determine the density of salt sense and the density of some Morton salt. Now, since salt sense is iodized, we're using iodized Morton salt. Now, in this experiment, they're going to make some volume and some mass measurements. And they're going to be using graduated cylinders. Now, what I have done here beforehand is shown you the volumes that they will be measuring out. And they would do this for each of the salts and measure the mass of each of these volumes. Now, we all know that Measuring a volume of a solid in a graduated cylinder is not really the way to get an accurate volume. But since this is a comparison, it's a relative density that we're looking for, then I think we can be a little bit forgiving. So they would be measuring out 15 milliliters, 35 milliliters, and 50 milliliters of each of the salts and determining those masses. And then they would do their graph. And we're going to go over to the easel, and we're going to look at those graphing results. So they would be graphing volume on the x-axis and mass on the y-axis. And the solid line here represents the Morton salt. The dotted line represents the salt sense. And then the students can determine the slope of each of those lines and they can come up with the two different densities. Now, are these the actual densities of the salts? Well, they're probably not super accurate, but in terms of a relative sense, it's observed that the density of the Morton salt is 1.29 grams per milliliter, and our salt sense is 0 0.845 grams per milliliter. So that is a significant difference in density. So the question is, how come they have different densities? Well, let's go back over here to the demo table. And at this point, with my students, what I would do is pass out to them a card and a magnifier. Now let me explain what's on the card and how I make these cards. These are just ordinary file cards, and I just happen to like bright neon colors. And what I've done is I've taken a hole punch, and I've punched two holes in the, each of these cards. And then I've put scotch tape on the back of the card. And then I have sprinkled a sample of each of the salts on the card. And then the students take just a simple hand magnifier, and they look through the magnifier at each of those crystal structures. And in the case of the Morton salt, they're pretty much able to figure out what that crystalline shape is. In the case of the salt sense, all they know is that it's really different looking, though they wouldn't necessarily be able to come up with a word to describe it. But then I would actually show them some representations of each of those salt crystals. So we're going to go back to the easel, and we're going to look at those shapes. Now, when they look through the hand magnifier, they can tell that the Morton salt 
is nice little cubes. And this is very, very clear to them that it has this cubic shape. But when they look at the other salt, the salt sense, they find that it is a different shape, like I said. It looks kind of jagged, but actually that shape is known as flake salt or hopper salt. Now, the thing about hopper salt is, well, how do they make that? Well, ordinarily, to obtain salt, what do we do? We evaporate water from a solution of brine, a salt solution, and ordinarily that gives us the cubic shape. But in the case of the hopper salt, what they do is that they evaporate the water at a very high temperature, and they do it very quickly, and they do it under pressure. And what results is these hopper-type crystals. Now, what's the advantage of the hopper salt? Well, we've seen that it's definitely less dense, right? But it does have an advantage as far as our taste buds go, because this shape will actually cling to your taste buds more easily than, say, the cubic salt. And actually, when they make things like pretzels and potato chips, they use hopper salt, because not only does it stick to your taste buds, but it also sticks to the product. Now, let's go back to that claim, 33% less sodium. What's happening here is you're having sodium chloride, but because it's less dense, because this hopper salt or flake salt is less dense, what you're getting is, in a teaspoonful, you're getting less salt. So their claim, yes, it's accurate. Salt sense does cost a little more, and actually you're getting less salt for this same size container. And we can reinforce that by placing it on a balance opposite our Morton salt. Because when we put them on here, we notice that they are the same volume, essentially. But when we put them on here, our Morton salt definitely outweighs our salt scents. So again, you can reinforce that about how much denser the Morton salt is than the salt scents. So this is a really good activity for students to practice graphing, to analyze a consumer product, and to learn a little bit about the salt that is important in their diet.